So you want to play a tabletop RPG like Dungeons and or Dragons, but you can't find a group? You tried looking on Discord, but you joined 10 servers and all you found was enough flakes to fill a cereal bowl? Facebook groups and message boards were no better with people ghosting you or bailing after one game? And Reddit? Well, you repressed your memories of what happened at Reddit. But don't give up. If you want to find a reliable game that fits your schedule and play style, you just need Start Playing, the number one site for finding games. You can search for a game by time and day, and Game Masters are backed by verified reviews. Regardless of your experience level, it's never been faster and easier to find a dedicated tabletop group. So if you're ready to play, head to StartPlaying.com today to start your adventure. moment taking a moment I just like to take a moment you know why because we're all here together oh we are all here together yeah. and i'm taking a moment to enjoy the fact that we get to play games and have fun that's right internet hey there welcome to adventures night my name is jack packard i'm your dungeon master we're recording live here in historic milwaukee in the beautiful comedy sports theater for adventures night season three uh, the Liar, the Witch, and the War Torn. I am joined by Amy Campbell. That's me, and I play Deborah Yeatstar, the tabaxi fighter cleric who's just here for a good time. Casey Wosu. Hi, I play Sigmar Iceblood, ASMR Archer Extraordinaire. <laughs> Ooh, Extraordinaire. Jesse Galena. I don't know why I rolled my R's there, <laughs> but uh, I did, and you can't stop me. So Jesse really Galena is also here. <laughs> I am here, and I play Grinderbin, the artificer with too much arcane knowledge, apparently. The artificer who's too good uh, at breaking his DM's plans. <laughs> nah, <laughs> yeah. And finally, Yahtzee Krosha. And I play multiple raffles with Everwind Smythe, the half elf, not half elf con artist. Also, not a bard or a rogue, who's holding his own better in fights since we figured out how stealth attack works. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy what happens when you learn the rules of the game you're playing. Incredible. Speaking of fights, uh, last episode, you all ran into a shambling mound that was battling with some human knights. After a wee bit of hemming and hawing, you decided to join the fight, save the knights, and defeat the monstrosity, which you did with uh, flair and fervor. It was quite beautiful. You got a little bit of information that these shambling mounds have been coming more and more frequently from the north. You were able to figure out that they're coming from Destiny's Keep to Castle Sasha. Then, at night, while you were preparing for bed, you were attacked by assassins. The assassins had your names, uh, your likenesses, and a promise of reward upon your death. You got a little bit, well, yeah. How much was the reward? What are we worth? Oh, oh. oh that's, that is now definitely the nobles. Yeah, we are, mm -hmm. ooh, we are big news. You are quite a threat to someone. Uh, so uh, you were able to uh, just kill one of the assassins and talk down the other one. And uh, that that was the night. Uh, you you were able to loot some items off of their corpses and a little yes. bit of gold. on that note, uh, Mortimer wants to hold up this fancy dagger he got and just say, Grindabin, arcane, arcadey, checky, checky. Uh, that's oh, a yeah, you know what Yassi? Great. I think it'd be great to start with an arcane check, especially if you use <gasps> dice envy dice. That's right, our exclusive dice sponsor for Adventure is Nigh Live. Dice Envy uh, furnished us with all of these beautiful so dice and uh, these wonderful dice trays uh, to roll. Thank you, Dice Envy, for sponsoring us. So yeah, you found a, a fancy dagger and you found a. A wooden shield that kind of oh, looks yeah, like yeah, a yeah. door. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta do that one, too. Uh, Grinderbin, I need uh, some Arcana checks for you. Which are you checking first? I'll check the... Uh, I'll do the knife. Be able to cook it in my yeah, I might as well great. check as well. Let's put our heads together on this. So, Arcana... Ooh, Arcana not a lot. 18, I think. Uh, I 
also got an 18. Okay. All right, so what are you what are you checking first? The fancy ass dagger. This is a dagger that is a plus one dagger, so plus one to attack and damage rolls. Uh, it is considered a magical weapon for uh, resistances, but the blade's hilt is hollow. That's what you notice when you uh, when you get a little bit further. Uh, you can uh, unscrew and cook a cork open the Ooh. hilt, and it is hollow, and it can hold up to three cantrip spell scrolls. Oh, interesting. So they must be cantrips, uh, and the you can use this dagger to cast the cantrips. The scrolls do not disappear after using them. Like it's a Harry Potter one. Oh my gosh! Whoa. That's good. Harry Potter only knew one spell. This one has three. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's known as the That's Dagger really awesome. of Ogre Magic. All right then. If we find another one of those, I'm buying that. I'm dual wielding. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> These people have too much money to just be common thieves. Like, well, I mean, they're assassins. Like, they're assassins. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, well, they're <laughs> assassins, but maybe they they're like have to be assassins to someone's nobility, private no assassin or something. But they told the liar man lies in the lie language. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe that hand. would happen. Oh. Could you no. imagine that someone using the language of thieves <laughs> would lie? Oh. But like, okay, so I guess Mortimer didn't know. Like, I guess he was as good a liar as Mortimer is. I thought. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought Mortimer was really good at lying. Mortimer's, Mortimer's very good. Mortimer's not necessarily a bullshit detector, though. He's not a like a bullshit. Well, I've got a stone I mean, that he I has a stone of detector. truth detecting. If only he could have used it. <laughs> <laughs> I had thought to, but you know, things oh, were terrible. I wanted to. He's I forgetting was, you have that. I so I, I mean, it maybe you got to remind. That's into the motion. The Dabarella wouldn't. Oh, that's that's into right. motion. The idea that everything he said is a lie, and that we have nothing to go off then in terms of the person who hired him. Sigmar, you give you can give me an insight check. Uh, sure. As as you're Whoa. as you're thinking about this, and I'll see if I can give you a little bit of information. Oh, Eighteen, and my insight's real high. Nice. So Twenty five, I want to say. Probably. Probably. What I want you to think about is like, if you are hiring a contractor for a job, mm -hmm. and you are you need something done real quick and dirty, you're not getting the best person, right? You're, which means you're also paying not a good price. If you are paying someone a high price, that person has probably been doing this for a while, has probably picked up a few magical things and has things. So like, we, you know that this is a high class customer. These assassins would have high class things. As, yeah, they'd be safe enough. Th there's a good value on your head. Tiny door. Yes, I would like you to do a roll for the... 26. Awesome. Uh, yeah, 26. Okay, a 26. This is a very special item. I hope so. Uh, this is uh, known as the Hatchway Buckler. One, it is a uh, it is a shield, so it can be used uh, if you are have it equipped. You get a plus two to your AC. That's just what any shield does, by the way. Okay. Uh, if you have it uh, equipped and are holding it in one hand, you can uh, have plus two to your AC. But this has magical properties as well. This has what is known as an ethereal hatch. As a bonus action, you cause two spectral hatch doors to open, one in a space within five feet and another in a space within 30 feet that you can see. It's a portal gun. It <laughs> is a portal gun. <laughs> <laughs> you can immediately use your movement to enter the door next to you, magically teleporting to the space uh, in the other door. If you don't, an allies whose speed is not zero can use their reaction to enter a door within five feet of them to magically teleport them to a space of the, uh, of the other door. <sighs> Only Humbling. one creature can teleport using this ability, and the door vanishes after it is used. Hmm. How often can the, the, the door be used? This is a once per day, so it recharges Dang. at dawn. Oh, okay. Wow. Once per day, okay. One creature can pass through the door before it closes. Yes. Can inanimate objects pass through this door? Whoa, <laughs> I see where your bullshit yeah. is going already. Does it only go one way? No. It can go either way. Does it have to be used in an empty space? Can you open up a door inside of man? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. not what I was going for. Well, there was but a I like giant one in the bum of a worm. Like. What I am going to call my okay. ruling 
because uh, it could really mess with you later, is that it does not have to be in an unoccupied space. Okay. But damage will be done if you have it in occupied space to the thing that uh, it inhabited. Oh, that just makes it better. <laughs> sure, sure. The the verdict is still out on inanimate objects not closing the door. <laughs> I feel like they'd probably close the door. Like something goes through Because well, he said creature. Oh, so like could we send an infinite amount of Something. Inanimate objects yeah. through a portal for funsies. <laughs> like magic cards, you <laughs> say? <laughs> I'm so I'm really glad we finally have an impartial observer here. See, I give them gifts and they try to bullshit me. Uh, I, I just want to use it to the max <laughs> of their ability. We don't want to cheat you of the entertainment or anyone at home of the entertainment of what to do with a portal gun. Okay, only one creature can pel uh, teleport using this ability, and the door vanishes after this ability is used, even if no creature teleport. Even if no creatures uh, mm. teleported. Okay, so it doesn't matter if something goes through it or not. It will only last an instant. It, it, la it, la it lasts for a very short time. Okay, okay so we just got to be smart. With so, the like, it so theoretically... What I'm going to say is, if you could shoot five arrows through the portal, I, I'm going to say the verbiage of creature, yes. Once a creature goes through, it's closed. It's closed. But also, it's open for, you know, a, a X amount of seconds. If you can shoot five arrows through it, that's Reason. not going to close it. So, oh, man. So if I could spawn <laughs> the thing, mm -hmm. and then you're just like... <laughs> mm -hmm. So you all spend the rest of the night learning about your magical items uh, and talking amongst yourselves about the possible uh, assassin senders. Uh, and then you wake up the next morning and it's the next morning and you're probably ready to get on your mm -hmm. way. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Ready? Here's the transition. Oh my God. Do, 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 And it's morning. That's pretty nice. Beautiful. It's, it's morning time. Are you ready to head off to the key? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. So, uh, you hop on your horses and you get your little cart, uh, going and you head off. Uh, obviously there's going to be a few shamblers here and there. You wave past. Yeah, we yep. And yeah, wave at them. Passing them by. Don't want to be rude. H how many would you say? I'm going to say uh, you, you passed by one yesterday uh -huh. and I'm going to say just this morning you passed by another one. Okay. Mm. All right. We talked about this uh, for a little bit. Uh, there was a little bit of a trick to find uh, Destiny's Keep in the first place, but you all talked to Connie Loose Lips Jarmy mm. about uh, Destiny's Keep, and she informed you how to get around one rather tricky trick that had to do with a fallen tree and going inside of it. So you have to ditch your cart, and you have to ditch your horses. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they can't make their way through the kind mm -hmm. of the the secret entrance into Destiny's Keep. Well, I guess we, we just tie them up at the entrance to the yeah. to the tree. Yeah, and we, we just can't on. forget about them and let them starve or something. Like we're in there for like three days. You haven't named your horse, have you? <laughs> you shouldn't get too attached, man. <laughs> My horse. I named them both. <laughs> Did, wait, did you name the horse both? Like one horse is named both? Yes, one of them's called both of these and the other one's called nuts. No, dude, no. <laughs> you make your way through the first magical secret that Connie told you mm -hmm. about uh, and find yourself in uh, definitely a creepier forest than you were once in. This feels very familiar. The dark wizards have an aesthetic. <laughs> You uh, you find yourself at the the foot of uh, what you assume at one point was a uh, was a great gate, uh, two giant statues on either side, and of course uh, in the distance uh, what you notice is the remnants of Destiny's Key. Hmm. Uh, what you see is uh, what was obviously once a mighty tower, but now just a fragment of it, mostly. Torn down, mostly broken down. It seems to only be one floor. Hmm. Hmm. But hmm. but you can see like, you know, remnants of the past tower that have, you know, innards, nothing in them. Does this show signs of current occupation? Not from where you are. Uh, I guess we're I guess too far <laughs> away. <laughs> you need to get closer, <laughs> I suppose. Let's, can I, let's look at these statues because I'm getting never ending story vibes all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me an investigation. Not 20. Oh, Son of a bitch. nice. My goodness. This uh, this is like kind of a classic gargoyle, you know, like big horns, like 
uh, awful face, uh, seems to be a massive stone statue, uh, looking to be also, hasn't been cared for in decades. Doesn't appear to have any moving parts. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to get up and laser our balls off or anything. Good. <laughs> like the one to never ending story. A great play I once saw. <laughs> I'm looking for magic stuff specifically, because this is a keep run by witches. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I got 30 yeah. arcana, so. What I will tell you is something is off about everything here. Like, you are sensing not illusory magic, but it has the feeling of illusory magic, is what I will say. Is There is not your arcana check. How do I like? I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this without just saying what's going Jack, on. Jack, I'm really dense. You might just have right? to tell me. This feels like a front. This feels like a you know like a, back in the 1920s we had speakeasies and like mm. a pet store. Uh, a pet store would mm. be there, but then if you knew where to look, there would mm. actually be right. a, a bar and casino. Okay. Right. And so like these statues, like they're not harming anyone, they're not hurting anyone, but they look old. You know what, everything looks really trashy here, almost to discourage people from looking for, oh, this is just spooky and trashy. I mean, I did notice there's like a a, a, a tree that is- uh, Not? Yeah, it's like autumnal instead of straight up dead, and that's like the only thing in the this orange, whole place. The orange thing over there. Yeah. Yes, yes, you, you definitely notice you notice that tree. That is that is a tree with with a fall color leaves on it. Uh, you see like a little, uh, what was probably once a sitting area around it. Hmm. Sigmar just points towards the tree. Says, "That looks weird. Does hmm. stick out. Yeah. Yeah, orange is a very strange color for a tree, considering it's the middle of summer. Right. It is the middle of summer. Funny that. No, and and you, you uh, once again like you're getting this feeling like well like yeah everything just here kind of sucks like you know nothing is jumping out and scaring you there's there's no traps the with your arcana check like your the illusion is that this place sucks mm -hmm. right. like I said <laughs> in fact it's totally rad <laughs> like uh, go go with that speakeasy metaphor is, yeah I guess that's so the I'm, best I'm direction for I can something point beyond you. all this trash right yeah. Okay, so uh, you get to the tree, you start looking around, and it feels, you know, just like a normal tree. Um, something that you, uh, everyone will notice, there's no leaves on the ground. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This is suspicious. This, very suspicious. There are just leaves on the trees, uh, all in the fall colors, but there are also some bare branches. Uh, you also see something carved into the trunk. <gasps> These would be uh, letters. Uh, you see a B, a K, and a B with a big heart around it. But something that Mortimer notices uh, is uh, th it, this is definitely something that has been tried to be scraped off. Hmm, BK. Hey, Sigma, what were the names of the, like, I don't know how much you remember about, like, the sisters that got banished. Sigma will remember the names of the of Beyonce sisters, well, we or know. is that, like, stricken from the record because of the, because Sig Sigma knows a lot about what the world knows about Beyonce, not right. anything. We've been <clears throat> told you the... what information that you know is that Albert fell in love with Betty Ticklepuss. Betty B, B, so, B okay. K, Beyonce, Beyonce knows Michelle Betty B B K B B K B B K Beyonce Kelly. Well, Kelly is a member of Destiny's Child. We don't know anyone well, B, in the in the game called Kelly. <laughs> B K Beyonce Knowles. Yeah, that could just and be then Beyonce B Knowles. For Betty. Uh, why don't uh, Why don't you give me a history check? We'll see. Uh, we'll, right. we'll see because, like, yeah, you are a Beyonce fanboy, but like, yeah, how deep? How deep do you <laughs> how, go? How deep does this run? Or 16. Okay, so you'd probably know a little bit more. Like, you know, obviously you would know, uh, you know, about kind of uh, the king, Beyonce's power, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. I, I think you would know the name of her other sister. So she only has one sister. And she has two sisters. Okay. She has Betty Ticklepuss and Calandra Ticklepuss. Calandra. Ah. <laughs> with a K? Yeah. Okay. Spelled with a K. Calandra. Betty and Calandra. So Betty, Calandra, and Beyonce. So this this is where they, this is their okay. old house, I would assume. Yes. Okay, Mortimer, <coughs> curious about the lack of leaves on the floor thing, mm -hmm. tries to take one of the leaves off the tree. Okay, great. Sort of plucks a leaf off the tree. Give me a strength check. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. The leaf reaches and grabs your finger, tries to pull it off your hand. <laughs> fifteen. Uh, with a, with a fifteen, you give a mighty tug, uh, and nothing. The leaf stays on the tree, mm. uh, and the tree tries to grab you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay. Not again. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we dealt with magical trees before? We I feel like have. Those we have. Um, uh, so now uh, you need a uh, dexterity saving throw. Oh, bloody hell! <laughs> well, it's gonna beat what the tree is rolling. So <laughs> <laughs> unless you roll a one, oh, I rolled a one. Did you? Yeah. Oh, great. Yes, I rolled a two. Tell me what happens, but I need to interrupt you. Okay, go ahead. No, no, no. I want to see what happens because okay. I have to do a reaction. So you you pull on the leaf. The leaf does not come off the branch. The branch wraps around your arm uh, and goes to yank you up. Oh, and then Grinderbin will shout and be like, no, don't pull. Like, corkscrew your arm the opposite way it's wrapping. And I will use Flash of Genius and give you <laughs> plus five to that ability check you just made. No! <laughs> oh, flash of genius! Good thinking, Grinderbin. <laughs> so the, the, the branch corkscrews around your arm, and Grinderbin uh, says, actually, the best way to deal with that is the corkscrew, and you're like, aha! So you, uh, you spin, you pirouette midair, <laughs> releasing yourself from the branch. Action landing on oh, one yeah. of uh, Three-point landing? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I had it handled, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the, the tree kind of like, and it just kind of goes back to normal. Well, I'm for burning it. Wait, hold on, guys. Don't you see? <laughs> well, I saw that, yeah. No, the, no, the letters, like this is BKB, like no, am I the only one? Beyonce, Calandra, Betty, Beyonce sisters? This you might be said their house. Their name. You said their name. <laughs> and you're acting kind of crazy, Sigma. <laughs> this might be where they grew up. He is acting a did little know, shady. Did we know that? <laughs> hmm. We knew Beyonce Tree? banished. Shade? <gasps> we knew Beyonce banished her sisters here. That's right. We didn't know they'd all lived here. Betty and Calandra? So, would, I mean, would that count as a banishment to just send them home? Well, it's house arrest. A, a, you know, a banishment isn't necessarily about where you send them, it's about keeping them out of another place. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Is Moped with us? Okay. So here's Albert and Moped. I was sorry it took us so long, Albert. Uh, Albert's pretty pretty darn scared to be here. Oh, I bet. It's been a pretty rough ride. So he's been here before? That's what he said, yep. Yeah. Does he know how to get in here? Like, does he know the secrets to how to get past the... The tree that grabs and like this facade that we seem to be in. Oh, maybe. I you suppose I could ask. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, you heard that? <laughs> yeah, he said go to the graveyard. Okay, let's okay. go to the graveyard. Okay, let's, okay, let's very cautiously make our way. <laughs> at what, at what point did we believe? I completely believe yeah, that. Yeah, I know that Mo has full faith. Believe. Like, when did we, like, as a party, when did we believe that Moped could actually hear Albert? Like, did we confirm that? <laughs> Deborella 100% <laughs> believes it. She <laughs> believes in the power of friendship, and she 100% <laughs> believes he can hear her friend. I, hang on, I just remembered, I keep forgetting. Sigma? Yes. Could you put these socks on? <laughs> I just thought you looked cold. Fine. <laughs> I just want someone to wear them. And you can handle your emotions pretty well, from what I've seen. You also know what the socks do. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I, yeah, I think we all know what the socks do. I just want to piggyback Sigma off Sigma puts on the socks. Some bus. Emotionally. Bad breath. Oh, man. Here we are playing in person together, and uh, we're playing still using Foundry VTT. Are we? I'd almost forgotten. It's so easy to use. Absolutely. Uh, Foundry VTT is a sponsor of this episode. And you know what I'm going to say I love about Foundry? It's a one-time payment. Exactly. I can use the money I saved to myself. Ah. Uh... <laughs> 
We appreciate uh, that it saves us money and that it works both online and in person. I don't have to wait for our next session. If something's bugging me or I want to upload something into my character or just check something in between a session, I have the capacity to do that too, which is super Ooh. cool. Without having to make any additional pesky downloads. No one has to download anything. It's all browser based. Which gives me more time to <sighs> The thing that got me that I legitimately didn't know uh, was that it would work on a laptop so old that it's it has one of the little like nipples for the mouse on it. On an old ass laptop yeah. running Linux. Yeah, running Linux. As as kind of a novice with D&D, clearly it's kind of difficult to pull in a bunch of new people, mm. but the fact that only one person needs to buy this or if a group all together maybe wanted to try it, they could split the purchase. Very very low bar of entry. Thanks Foundry VTT. We appreciate you and other people should give you money cuz we already did. Well, yeah. you already. Did. I already did. That's the true. rest of us did not. Oh, and, and that's, that's what. That's how I'm great here. it is. Because yeah. I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Head over to FoundryVTT.com and check them out right now. Oh, actually, wait. Don't check them out right now. Wait until the episode is over and then check them out. Okay, bye. Thank you. Uh, so you come over to a graveyard full of perfectly normal sized graves. <laughs> these are not giant at all. Uh, these are <laughs> humans. <laughs> They are human-sized graves. Hey guys, check out these human-sized graves. Yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> Such, you know, the thing that really gets me about them is that this is a, an illusion we're aware of, yet these graves seem so normal. I know, I'm so impressed by this grave, I think I'm going to walk past it as slowly as is humanly possible. <laughs> wow. Obvious step, uh, read the gravestones. The gravestones, as far as you can see, are so withered and worn that you cannot tell their names. They're also covered with moss and cobwebs. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll bite. Uh huh. Do it. I'm going to use the edge of my the point of my rapier ah. to scrape at the moss a little bit. Okay, great. Yeah, and you can uh, you can scrape at the moss a little bit, uh, and you see uh, you see uh, ticklepuss. Uh, you know these are these are uh, part of the ticklepuss clans. Uh, you probably uh, on this one here uh, you see Bedulia ticklepuss uh, and some you know dates of life mm -hmm. and death. All right, so I'll just subtly walk into this back into the middle of the cemetery. Oh, okay. Saying looks like a ticklepuss family plot. That's. Uh, all we got so far. Why, why did you bring us here, moped? Yeah, what, what's yeah. Albert need us to do next to get past this? Albert's going quiet. Dang it, Albert. He's scared. <laughs> why, this place, uh, this is a place to turn him into a shovel. I know it. Oh, Aww. Albert, Albert, I got you, buddy. I got you. <laughs> Dog, it's, it's okay, Albert. It's all right. But you, you're We're all, here to uncurse yeah, you. Yeah, you're you already help. a shovel, though. Like, they're not going to turn you into another shovel. We don't know that. Well, you could turn him into a trowel. <laughs> they could turn, turn him into a pooper scooper. We don't know. We can't, can, we can't read these other ones. All of them look the same in terms of co coverage. All of them look like, the same in terms of coverage. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna clear the one next to me and read that. And that's also just tickle puss. How are you clearing it? How am I clearing it? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna shift some stuff from my boot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little, a little I will a little scrape at the you know. I will also start clearing. Uh, no, not yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, because oh. because uh, as your boot uh -oh. touches then, the gravestone, uh -huh. a skeletal hand mm -hmm. reaches out from the grave and grabs onto your boot. Oh, bloody hell! And starts pulling you down. It's pulling me down. Yeah. Can I like yell out loud? Ah, skeleton! <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna say no? <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird question. Yes, you can yell out. Uh, All right, uh, so I, I try to pull back my okay. leg. So I guess I have to like strength check it. Strength or uh, saving throw, please. Saving throw. Yeah. Twenty. Oh. Yep. Yeah, so your boot <laughs> breaks free, and the skeletal hand goes back down. That's it. Like it's not continuing the assault. We keep getting grabbed, and then nothing happens. It's Maybe almost we... <laughs> like the place is just trying to hold us, or like. Imprison us and do nothing else. I don't think that that's how we get to where we need to go. Like, it's just let one of them pull us? It's crossed my mind. I mean, if you saw a skeletal hand coming out of a graveyard trying to drag you in, your instinct would be to get the fuck away from it. Yeah. It would be an effective way to hide the entrance. You want to risk it? Be my guest, man. Don't. 
let me paint a bigger picture as, uh, you know, you, you're here. So making the thing I wanted to make from a top-down perspective mm. yeah. is difficult because, of course, mm. you're on the ground. You know, what you see isn't what you see. So, like, w while this does look like a roof, what I need you to imagine is you can't see on top of it. Obviously, right, right. because you're on the ground. So this is like the keep, but you see like you see like the roof is missing. You see like walls half broken. So this this is the keep. This is the main. So we can see from where we are, like into the ruins. Uh, a little bit. You can see a little, uh, not fully though, because it's mostly this flat brick uh, that would be on the outside of a keep. Okay. Hmm. Flat brick wall, broken walls, uh, and no uh, no roof as far as you can see. Obviously, there's a roof here because I don't want you to see inside. <clears throat> All right, I Sigmar wants to see inside. So, <laughs> well, you happen to be friends with that's a Baxi and the second story work thief. I mean, well, but Albert wanted us to come to the grave plot and then doesn't tell us anything, Moped. Like, Albert's well, quiet. He's, he's scared. He's well, quiet. He needs you to figure this out for yourselves. <laughs> I'll tell you I what, can't just tell you what to do. That's what's called railroading. I'll tell you what my instinct is. <laughs> my instinct is to try to climb up one of these broken walls and see if it actually is broken or just an illusory broken wall. Mm. You do that. I'll use magic to wipe away all of the grime from the gravestones. Yeah, you do see that. if there's any code words on them. I'll, I'll cast Mage Hand. Okay, great. And I'll use Mage Hand to wipe away all the stuff great. from the graves. Yeah, and you'll see a, yeah, another generic tickle puss. Well, Mortimer climbs, I'll just continue to go okay. down. Okay. Great thing. So you're climbing up, uh, you know, kind of to the edge that you can see. Yeah, trying to see over the top of the broken part. I like feel the air above the broken part and make sure it is a broken part and not an illusory uh, thing. Uh, it is. It is broke apart, and you can uh, you can actually see into the keep. Ooh. Uh, what you see is a room in shambles, uh, you know, much like the outside, the inside. This looks like it has not been uh, occupied in decades. This is a place in absolute ruins, except for uh, something that you can see. You can see movement. You can see a, a, a small-ish creature nibbling on a corpse. Hmm. From the looks of this, this is a greeny, slimish creature. How fresh is the corpse? In a bucket. The corpse, from what you can see, uh, does not look re very fresh. Okay. Anything else significant in the room? I see a copy-pasted fallen uh, picture frame. I don't know if that's a sign of illusion or laziness. I mean, making maps is hard. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's a slime in a bucket that looks like there's a skeleton inside the slime. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Interesting. That's what, probably what it's currently digesting. It's nibbling on the corpse. It's you said. nibbling on. It's kind of like. Hmm. Okay, I guess Mortimer will uh, come away from there and address his fellows again. Oh, okay. Mortimer will call down. Well, the place isn't dead. Well, there's, but it's definitely got a skeleton theme going on. There's a skeleton in there, like in the middle of a slime. Like not the, it doesn't look like the slime ate this person and digested them. It looks like a skeleton wearing slime. At any rate, this isn't like a way in, if the rest of you want to follow me. There's still an illusion here though, it doesn't. Ugh. Oh, well, maybe the graveyard is the way in and that's the reason Albert led us this way, as opposed to. Yeah, I, I do agree. Um. I think it makes sense that it's scary and stuff inside too, uh, but something still doesn't feel quite right, and that happened to us recently. I, there's got to be something else. Grindabin, what does the name say on this big one here? It's name on the big one. What, we're just like hanging off the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, one, no one wants to come up here? No, no. No. All right, no, all right. Staying here is nice and safe, like <laughs> high off the ground. <laughs> Skeleton arms aren't that long. <laughs> The name on the grave is Latavia Ticklepuss. It's, it says Latavia Ticklepuss. Does that ring any bells? Is that of any note to an aficionado? You would know Latavia Ticklepuss as Beyonce's father. Latavia is, the, but also was that person significant? Beyonce's father. Did we, we didn't hear anything about Beyonce's father prior to this, right? Well, we know he's the father of a whole bunch of witches. Beyonce, <laughs> Beyonce's father, Latavia Ticopus, would have been a king at one point. Aha. A king of witches, no less. So, uh... Wait, no, you said Beyonce took power. No, Sas. Beyonce's mother took power. 
Beyonce's grandmother. grandmother. Okay. Beyonce's grandmother is the one who ousted the Jarmies. And that was Sasha. And that was Sasha. That was Sasha Knowles. So this is Sasha's son. No, this is a Ticklepuss. Oh. Okay. So married into the Ticklepuss okay, gotcha. married. The Ticklepuss married, married, married Beyonce's the... mother. Gotcha. So he would be of note as he was a king, obviously not as famous as a Knowles. Oh, I've got to mention there's corpses in here too, or at least one. Oh, good. <laughs> I feel like we're getting nowhere in this damn graveyard. I'm hopping a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm athletic, so I'm assuming I can also climb up here like Mortimer can. Uh, for for you, I need a uh, I need a uh, athletics check. A uh, twelve. A twelve. Um, and, and plus four. Oh, okay, plus four. Yeah, like you, you, it's you're not necessarily agile getting up the wall, uh, but <laughs> you know, oh yeah, I got this. <laughs> you know, you you uh, you definitely get up to Mortimer eventually, and, and like yeah. <sighs> that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, yeah, like, you know, climbing. Uh, this is the scene inside, kind of looking over the wall. You see oh, over that. here, yeah, that's the thing. The, the, the ooze creature and and the uh, the corpse. The corpse mm. does not look fresh. Uh, the creature. Does it have any interest in us, or are we like undetectable so far? Right, uh, right now you're just looking over a wall. The creature has no. Sigmar's jumping in. Oh hell yeah! yeah. Sigmar's right. dropping down into the room. Okay, Sigmar. great. <laughs> Sigmar, boom! You jump down into the room, and uh, you know, like as soon as your boots uh, hit the floor, the slime kind of gets up mm. and like turns over to you, uh huh, and just goes, "Hi, uh, hi." <laughs> uh, and starts walking towards you. W what's up, man? Thing? Would you like someone to come down and talk to someone? For you, Sigma? <laughs> I, di I didn't expect this man to talk. <laughs> and kind of like starts pawing at your boots, like, hello. Uh, w what what you doing there? I was eating. You you eat people? <laughs> I'm gonna step back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just you just eat folk? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> I eat a lot of things. Uh, so here's my next question: Do you want to eat pain? <laughs> <laughs> what is pain? Sigmar attacks it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mortimer shouts down, you better come up, uh, Bumble fucks at it again. How do you attack it? Um, I got the, the dagger on me. I'm just going to, like, stab at it. Okay. It's a gel. It started talking to me. I thought we'd have a dialogue, but he's over here trying to eat my boots. He didn't try to eat your boots. He was grabbing at you. But yeah, go ahead. Make an attack roll. 16. Okay, that hits. That hits. Six damage. Okay. Uh, six damage. So yeah, you stick your dagger into uh, the ooze, uh, and it just looks at you and goes, "Hi." <laughs> all right. So this thing doesn't take any dagger damage. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. So I didn't feel that at all. So my my pain Ta joke. Taking it, it damage landed. and feeling damage are two different things. <laughs> right. gotcha. It took damage, but it's still not hostile towards you. What is pain? Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know how to explain this to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Grabs onto your boot again. Okay, Mortimer drops down. <laughs> and, and there's hello. <laughs> and like while still grabbing onto Sigmar's boot, like the head turns around. <laughs> hello! Hi, what's your name? <laughs> Oob Florentine. Oob Florentine. Well, my name's Ingrid. And it starts heading is your, your direction. Is, is there somebody who looks after you? No. <laughs> I'm lost. Are you lost? <laughs> I'll just grab a, like, a, a loose like bit of wood. Yeah. And just sort of hold it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, do you mind if I keep you back a bit? I have a thing about personal space. Mm. <laughs> and it's like now he's like clawing at the wood like... What's personal space? <laughs> can you can you tell me where you came from? 
and like starts eating it, like, like eating the piece of wood. Okay, just let it go. I'm sorry, what did you say? I was too busy, I was too busy, I was too busy being Oob uh, Florentine, I apologize. So can, can you tell us where you came from, Oob Florentine? Yes! Could you show us? Yes! Could you show us right now? I'll take you to daddy! That sounds <sighs> enchanting! Uh, and uh, Oob Florentine starts... Is he heading to this door? Alright, I'm out of that door, yep. Okay. <laughs> Okay, where are we now? Uh, you're in uh, what was probably once a, a main grand hall, and Oob Florentine is uh, heading uh, out what appears to be the front door. Hmm. Did anyone know? Did we, did we notice a front door while we were outside it? Yeah, there was like yeah, some locked down so. big doors. Okay, so uh, yeah, he he takes you back uh, outside, uh, and it, you know he's he's kind of like he puts his slimy hands out. <laughs> Uh-huh. And uh, and makes his way uh, outside of the dilapidated keep. Oh, he's in a little bucket. Oh my god! Uh, oh. Uh, Albert, uh, are are you guys? How close are you to Oob Florentine? Uh, I'm following. I'm maintaining a distance of about this much. Yeah, I'm following kind of right behind him. Um, and so like he gets this close, and all of a sudden, Albert or uh, a moped looks up and is like, ah! And it raises up Albert to hit him. No, no, moped, be cool. Uh, what? <laughs> this, this first off, this thing won't be, uh, it doesn't feel pain, apparently. But second, I, th I think it's trying to show us something. I asked it where it came from, and it's and it's told us to follow it. Um, and and it, like, it gets out, and it sees a uh, moped, and it sees you two, and it's just like, Hi! Hi. <laughs> oh, hey hello! Deborah like, kneels down to, like, kind of, like, she doesn't get any close to it, but just, like, kneels down and goes, Oh, hello. Um, um, I'm a friend. My name's Deborella. What's your name? Uh, Oob Florentine goes, Oob Florentine. Oh, that's a really lovely name. Good one. That's a good one. Um, do I need to move out of your way? Am I in your way? No, I was going to come and taste you. Uh, um, I love <laughs> tasting things, but I'd prefer if you didn't hey, do that. Hey, Oob, yeah, no we're tasting. Gonna, we're, we're, <laughs> we're only we're, we're checking out your dad or whatever, right? And it, it goes, it goes near to you and puts its uh, <laughs> its hand on your boot again and goes, "Your boots taste good." Th thank you. Where's your dad? Oh, right, <laughs> Daddy. I'll take you to him. Uh, and uh, Ooh Florentine uh, heads uh, to the grave, and skeletal hands pop out, grab the bucket, and uh, pull Ooh okay. Florentine down. So this was the entrance. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it's glad we found and, like something. And Ooh, to... Florentine goes, "Bye, come with me." <laughs> I need to get, I need to get real it. close <sighs> to the grave and, and like put my hand down and be like, "Did you make it all the way through?" Silence. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're gonna hear that through the dirt. <laughs> Dang it. Well, I think someone's gonna have to take a risk. Dabrella. <laughs> <laughs> why, why aren't you so dark uh, healer? Why does it first? have to be me? <laughs> because you're the tank with the highest health, that's why. Uh, are we sure we want to go meet the dad of a slime? We don't have any other leads. I mean, there's I'm getting several hungry. other graves. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, Sig Sigmar, Sigmar hops on the grave and the skeletal way. hands wrap oh, around your legs. Oh. And, start and it starts pulling me down slowly. Pulling down. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm gonna copy Ooh Florentine to them, say bye. <laughs> you know, there's occasionally things to admire about Sigmar, I find. Uh, yeah, uh, Sig Sigmar, one. you're now up to your chest. Uh, Hands keep like wrapping and they wrap around your shoulders. Let's they wrap go. Around your head. Let's go. We in there. And da it, it, before, uh, uh, his arms are already down. His arms are already ah, down. Ah, damn it. Uh, just, his, just his head. Uh, before, <laughs> before he's completely <laughs> submerged, she goes, not again! And she just grabs his head to like go down with him. <laughs> she just doesn't want him to be alone. Okay, okay so she'll like. So so you grab, grab his head. <laughs> she'll jump up. His dreadlocks. You grab Sigmar's head, uh, and as, as soon as you grab his head, skeletal hands uh, pop out and grab you your hands as well and start pulling you down. So Sigmar, you are now fully submerged, gotcha. and Dabrella, She's you are in, like head first. Okay. <laughs> You're like, oh boy. Okay, uh, so. 
First thing we need, we need a very special roll. I need a constitution saving throw. I'm good at those. This is a very special roll as you are being you are being dragged it's that one, literally right? underground yeah, into a grave. Right. I need sure. a constitution Jeez. saving You're throw. Plus two, by the way. All right, very special roll. Thanks to Dice Envy for giving us the special roll dice cam for just such situations. Yeah. Go. Seven. Is it? Don't forget to hold your breath. <laughs> and you get plus five. <laughs> Well, oh, no, 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 he can't hear you. He's underground. Oh. Is it, yeah, does, he's do they have to hear you? Hang on, let me. Well, uh, is it, how magical is this? I don't know, let me look it up. <laughs> how much damage do I have to roll here? Uh, another creature, is he still visible to me? No, he's underground. He's gone, he's missing no, it, it, okay. It's creature you can see ah. within 30 feet. Sigmar, you take 10 damage. Do I get to roll too? Of course you do, <laughs> of course you do. Havarella decided to uh, just join Sigmar and being pulled underground. Skeletal hands will wrap around your, your head, your shoulders, your body. You are now underground. Constitution saving throw. Okay. Plus five, 24. Dang. The hardy Dabarella. <laughs> All this dirt is going by you. You are holding your breath. You take no damage whatsoever. Uh, as Dabarella is going down while her like ankles are yeah. still up, going to be like... <sighs> Can't let him down there. Look, I th I might have a plan if this tries to suffocate us. I'm gonna reach and grab Del Dabarella's ankle. Okay. Right. And I'll, 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 I almost he's... imagine Mortimer like jumping on top and then just kind of. <laughs> just, yeah. just I'll, I'll grab Dabarella's ankle with one hand and reach out for Mortimer's well, hand I'll with my other hand. I'll sit on Grindapin's large head. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a bar stool. So I, so I hold my hand out, but you just sit on my head. Yeah. Like, yeah. Bastard. <laughs> uh, uh, hold my breath. <gasps> yeah. You both get pulled under constitution saving throws from oh, everyone. Wait, before I hold my breth huh? <clears throat> I'd like to express a feeling. <gasps> Confidence. Well, what's that do? Plus one to ability save or check. Oh. 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 And you feel a confidence. Feel confident. You feel suddenly now. confident. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I had to be like to jump you. in there <laughs> first anyway. <laughs> constitution saving throw! Thirteen. Thirteen? Oh, Shit, how do you have 20. a plus five as well? Disgusting. Mortimer, you take three damage. And Grinderbin, you are able to uh, get you, a mushroom. You like yeah, you. The ground, the ground is not so a big deal to me. Going through the ground is not a big deal yeah, for you. I'm worried uh, about them more. And uh, uh, Moped uh, sees you go. Oh, don't leave me up here! All hey. oh, right, Moped. Good and uh, Moped. Uh, him and Albert jump uh, uh, with uh, with Mortimer. Uh, Moped should have a bonus since he carries a shovel all the time, so he's like a dirt expert. <laughs> Moped rolled a natural 20. There you go. Oh, oh, there yes. you go. Moped rolled a natural 20 for yes. his constitution save. <laughs> uh, so you all get pulled underground, and after a moment, because you have to hold your breath for a, a, good, uh, a good long while, uh, each of you uh, find yourself, uh, the skeletal hands, push you up through another dirt grave, but this dirt grave is in the middle of a grand hall. <gasps> Ooh. Uh, a grand hall that is uh, filled with uh, splashes of paint. Uh, all sorts of different uh, colors splashed on the walls, on the floors, on the ceilings, with uh, nine different paintings, three on the wall uh, to the left, three on the wall in front, three on the wall uh, in front of you. You see no doors and no windows. And that's where we'll end this episode. Oh. So thanks everybody for watching and or listening to this Adventures Night Season 3. Uh, we'll bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye. <laughs>